We're going to start out tonight by talking about air quality. Each of us has the right to breathe clean air that's not contaminated with dangerous chemicals. I mean, it seems so obvious to say that that it's almost silly, but not everyone gets to breathe clean air. Some people live by factories that pollute. But thanks to the Forest Service researchers based right here in Portland, moss, that's right, moss is now pointing out trouble spots and its use is spreading nationwide. Before we get to the latest, let's jump back in time to explain how we got here with a story I did six years ago when I first met Portland's premier moss researcher. We see lots of moss, lichens, there's lichens growing with the moss, they're really similar. See. Trees and the things that grow on them this moss have enchanted Sarah Jovan have for decades. Roots. It's got a base with little holdfasts that help anchor it They to told the her tree. stories about the health of forests and now the health of cities. You'll see a lot of this Along the way, also. she picked her favorites. She loves lichen and until recently hated moss. I always looked at moss as lichen bullies because they compete for space, so I've always been a little biased against moss, but I'm, I'm a fan girl now. Pour a little water in. She discovered moss held an amazing storehouse of pollutants. It just absorbs the water really quickly. Absorbing and saving, it, it ready to reveal where it heavy metals lurk in the air. The, the moss is like, hey guys, over here. <laughs> Stop Somebody's scraping me off your roof. <laughs> Jovan and her research partner, Jeffrey Donovan, collected 246 moss samples around Portland. Their goal, to document how trees clean the yeah, air. I'm just get a big handful. Analyzing for metals was an afterthought. That's it. When they ran the computations and generated the maps, the heavy metals leaped to the surface oh, and grubby, stunned even, even the glasses. researchers. Yep. Yep, the first time that we looked at the data in a map form, we're <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> There's a bullseye over bullseye, and I had to double check. I'm like, is that the name of the facility? It is indeed. <laughs> Months later, air monitors confirmed high levels of cadmium, which causes cancer and kidney problems, spewing from the bullseye glass company. It was right there. It was right there. And then, of course, you're like, oh my gosh, there's schools there, there's residential areas. It was actually really frightening. It would be months before public health agencies and the Department of Environmental Quality alerted the public. But I'd like what to know followed were DEQ angry or... public meetings, the firing of a top air quality official, and a class action lawsuit. It was the first time such research techniques were own. used in a U.S. city, making Jovan and Donovan celebrities in their field. She's not used to the spotlight, yeah. but she's glad to have played a role in pioneering such a cheap and effective method right for sampling off. air pollution in America. There you go. And by the way, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And her opinion of moss has changed forever. I'm so proud of the moss. I know, and to think that I just grudgingly accepted that I had to work with this grubby moss, and now I'm like, orthotricum, thank you. <laughs> She's a lot of fun. Since that story, by the way, the neighbors of Bullseye Glass filed a class action lawsuit. The company settled in 2019 for $6.5 million. The moss research was also used in a second class action lawsuit, this one against Precision Cast Parts in southeast Portland. The company settled earlier this month for $22.5 million. That money includes millions of dollars already spent at the plant on better emission controls. Neighbors living within this area around the metals parts manufacturing facility are eligible to file for some of the settlement money, but you have to do it by April 9th. Hopefully you can see that on the map there. Now, let's catch up with Sarah Joven, the Forest Service moss expert. I got to talk with her today at Kelly Point Park. Her most recent big project was in the spring of 2020 when she went to the Seattle area to help train the Duwamish Valley Youth Corps. That's a group that wanted to collect moss in the Duwamish Valley. They found arsenic and chromium levels in moss in some areas that were double the amount found here in Portland in our polluted neighborhoods. It's the first time anyone, any group of people, like non-scientists, has really done the method and done a good job. We had experts also go out and collect moss just to compare and make sure, and they did fantastically. Their data were repeatable, and yeah, it was great. Yeah. New way to do it. Sarah spent much of the pandemic compiling results of her research, writing it up for a scientific journal. She's also fielding requests for similar help from other parts of the country as more and more people get the idea to study moss, looking for warning signs of heavy metal contamination. She feels good about that most recent work in the Seattle area where people in poorer neighborhoods were getting sick but had little information to help explain it. Um, so that was very rewarding to me to be helping solve um, this long-standing problem. So there's one air quality monitor 
maybe two in that entire area. And so you can imagine if you want to learn about neighborhood scale pollution, that doesn't tell you anything. So yeah, they now are armed with a whole bunch of very specific information about where the metals are. And that helps focus those follow-up efforts. And hopefully, therefore, at the end of the day, they'll reach solutions that are more helpful. We're all lucky to have the Moss Lady. By the way, the Bullseye Saga continues. The Oregon Health Authority is holding a virtual community meeting April 5th at 6 p.m. where you can comment on OHA's health assessment draft report for Bullseye Glass. A link to the hearing is on our website right now, kgw.com.